If you're like most fishermen, you may only get to go fishing once a week, maybe twice a week if you're lucky. And when that time comes, if you're like me, you're just so excited to get out there and go fishing that sometimes we don't do the things that are necessary for us to be successful when we're out there on the water. Today, I wanna to tell you about five different things you can do before you even hit the water that will make you a successful fisherman when you're out there on the water, a person who goes out and consistently catches bass. So stay tuned. It's going to be a good one. This video is brought to you by Fin Fishing and Fin Fishing is a fishing apparel business that I actually started. It's named after my son Thomas Finn. I've already announced this on the channel before so the limited stock that I have is dwindling down pretty quickly but if you guys want to get 20% off right now click that link below in the description for finfishing.com you can check out some of the shirts and other items that we have now onto the video so i've been around the tournament bass fishing scene for over 15 years now and i have fished with a tremendous amount of successful fishermen and i've also fished with a lot of guys who are newbies there are beginning bass fishermen but whether you're fishing tournaments or you're just out there for fun fishing these five steps can really help you to be more successful when you actually get to the water so let's Let's start with the first tip that a lot of successful fishermen do before they hit the water and that is get a head start. Like I said in the beginning of this video, a lot of us just want to rush the lake. We're ready to hook up our boat to our truck or we're ready to just throw our rods in the truck and get to the body of water. And a lot of times we don't do any research. We don't do anything that can actually help us out there on the water. And this is gonna apply to you if you're fishing a pond or if you're fishing a really, really big lake. The thing that successful fishermen always do, even if it's just for 15 minutes at a time, is they will do a little bit of research about the body of water that they're fishing before they even get there. Knowing what to expect from a lake before you get there can really help you to just be more efficient efficient out on the water. And if you're only getting one day of the week out there on the water, you want to be really efficient to be able to cover water, to be able to catch a lot of bass. A few things that will give you a head start is one, looking at a topographical map. Now you may have some fancy electronics that actually have a map on them that you can sit there and you can look through. But if you don't, you can always go to navionics.com and you can actually look at maps across the United States of all the different lakes and rivers that you can potentially go to. This is extremely important because some lakes may be 30,000 acres, 40,000 acres, 100,000 acres. And so for you to be able to catch fish, it's really best that you narrow the search. Now it's really important that you have a firm understanding about bass behavior in order for you to look at a topographical map and be able to see where you should be fishing. You should understand where bass winter or where they move up to in the springtime or where they go in the summertime or where they're going to be in the fall time understanding kind of the fish movement in the lake that you may be fishing are really going to help you to be more efficient at looking at a topographical map and then picking out where you should spend your time fishing. I'm not going to talk about bass movement in this video, but if you want more direction on what bass do during certain parts of the year, I'll leave some links down below in the description for some videos that I've done about that exact subject. Another thing that you can do that will allow you to be a more successful fisherman out on the water is looking at Google Earth. Now, obviously you can't see under the water with Google Earth, but what you can see is that lay down tree that's in the back of a creek or that dot that's on a point or that riprap bank that leads into a spawning pocket. These are areas that you can either write down and put them in a little notebook or you could put them into your electronics. That way, once you hit the water, you can immediately start attacking those areas that you think are going to set up well for the period and the time that you're out there fishing. Now, although you can't see under the water with Google Earth, you can actually look back at certain times when the lake was drained. For instance, maybe the lake had a drought, a really bad drought 10 years ago and the water was 20 foot low, you may be able to find pictures on Google Earth that allow you to see that lake when it's 20 foot below. And you're gonna be able to see little rock piles, stumps, road beds, anything that you think could hold fish and it's gonna allow you to be more efficient once you hit the water. Google Earth is also perfect if you're a bank angler. This is gonna allow you to see where maybe you can park your car and get access to the lake. It's also gonna allow you to see, hey, maybe this corner of this lake or pond that you're gonna fish might be well. So 
Google Earth is a huge tool that you can use whether you fish from a boat or from the shore. Really the biggest thing you can do here is try to get a head start. Try to know where you're going to fish before you even get to the body of water. That way you can focus more on catching fish and finding the right lures. Now speaking of lures, another thing that successful fishermen do before they even get to the water is they avoid the color game. There are literally thousands of different lures on the market and a lot of those lures come in five, six, 10, 15, 20, 30 different colors, which means that we have thousands of different choices of lures and colors of lures to use before we even hit the water. But in my mind, there's really an 80-20 rule when it comes to color in bass fishing. And what I mean by that is about 80% of the time, your biggest shades, your most popular colors like green pumpkin, black and blue, and white, one of those is probably going to work where the other 20% of the time, it might be because you have red flake in that green pumpkin that allows you to get a fish or something like that. Successful fishermen aren't typically worried about having five strands of orange in their green pumpkin jig. They're more worried about locating an area, a group of fish, as opposed to finding that perfect color for that fish. Literally, if you just put the colors that you have the most confidence in, maybe it's green pumpkin, maybe it's watermelon, or maybe it's black and blue, or maybe it's June bug. You know, you have your natural colors, you have your dark colors, and you have your bright colors. But if you stick to the ones that you have confidence in, more times than not, once you get around a fish, probably 80% of the time, they're going to bite that lure. Tip number three that's gonna allow you to be a more successful fisherman when you get out on the water is taking the conditions captive. So the reason why I say take your conditions captive is because what do you do with anything that's captive? What do you do with anything that has been captured, right? You interrogate it. And this is exactly what you should do with the conditions that you're facing. You should interrogate it. You should ask a lot of questions to yourself, not obviously to the conditions. For instance, maybe you go out one day fishing during the spring and maybe it's a colder day, right? Maybe it's, it's, it's 45 degrees and it's kind of cloudy. Now that is the conditions that are happening right now, but taking it captive, really interrogating it is really about looking at the weather that has been leading up to that day. For instance, maybe over the last two weeks, you've had a lot of sunny conditions, you've had a lot of warming temperatures, but the day that you go out fishing just happens to be that colder day. Now, if you just pay attention to the cold part, you might end up fishing a little bit deeper or maybe you're fishing a little bit thicker cover but the thing is is that it's been warming and it's in the spring and the fish are probably starting to flood the banks and they might be extremely shallow and extremely active. So make sure you interrogate the conditions. Look at what happened the week before, but also you wanna look at what's going to happen throughout the day. For instance, it's cloudy in the morning, but maybe later in the day, the sun is gonna come out. And when that sun comes out, the lures that you are using might have to totally change. So being prepared beforehand is really going to allow you to be a lot more successful out on the water. Another huge thing in this realm is don't be a fair weather fan. Don't only go bass fishing on days that it's perfect to go out there because you're going to learn a lot more about how to catch bass if you go no matter the conditions. If it's pouring down rain, go fishing. If it's super cold, go fishing. If it's super cloudy, go fishing. That's going to allow you to be a lot better fisherman for years and years to come. Tip number four is successful fishermen are always equipment ready. Now in this video, I'm not going to necessarily talk about the equipment as far as your bass boat and your tow vehicle, right? Because not everybody has a bass boat or goes boat fishing. So it's really going to pertain to the equipment as far as your tackle, your gear, your rods and reels. A lot of trips and a lot of outings really come down to landing fish and execution. For instance, you may be going to a new body of water that you've never been before and you may go out there, you may only hook five fish that day. And if you catch all five of those fish, that day may look very, very successful. But if you only land two of the five fish that you hook because you have equipment failures, that day is not going to be a successful day. And even if you just go out and you lose that one fish, that one seven pounder, eight pounder, 10 pounder, 12 pounder, whatever it may be, it may be your personal best. If you lose that fish, again, it's gonna be an unsuccessful day. So every really good angler that I have 
ever been around, every successful bass fisherman that I've been around is always equipment ready. There's something that myself and the partner that I fish tournaments with, we always talk about, and that's fresh line, strong knots, and sharp hooks. Those are three huge components that's going to allow you to catch a lot more fish, having fresh line. You don't always wanna go out fishing with line that's been on your rods for four or five months. Now, if it's braided line, that's different, but if it's fluorocarbon or monofilament, that line is gonna be a lot weaker now, and that could lead you to losing or breaking off fish on the hook set. Another thing is having strong knots. You should really learn how to tie your fishing knots correctly, because that is one of the weakest points of our entire system that can fail you and lead to you losing fish. So make sure you know how to tie knots correctly, and make sure you retie those lures that you think you're going to use the day that you go out fishing. Another huge one, and I preach this all the time, is simply having quality hooks strong hooks. If you're using treble hook lures, I'm going to suggest that you take off the stock hooks, put on good hooks. If you're using just single hook style baits, make sure that hook is sharp. You don't want to be fishing with a swim bait that has dull hooks on it because you're going to lose fish because of that. Another huge component about your equipment is your drag. I cannot stress to you how important this is because this has actually lost me a couple of big fish in some big tournaments. I remember fishing a local championship tournament and I went to cast this lure for the first time this one day. It was a top water bait in a six pound smallmouth just came up grabbed that bait and I set the hook and my line completely came out my drag was completely loose and therefore I just didn't get a hook in this fish at all it was on there for about three seconds and then it came off what had happened was that as we were running to that spot that day my drag was being hit by the boat carpet and it had shaken loose so loose that I literally had no tension when I set the hook it just completely came out doing something as simple as checking your drag on your reels before you even start casting can really be the difference between catching big fish and not. Now, as far as equipment goes, I'm not gonna talk about your rod and reel selection because that is a totally different video for a totally different day. All right, guys, the fifth tip that a lot of successful fishermen do before they even hit the water is they understand their goals. This is extremely important. I don't think a lot of guys think about this all the time. It's really important to understand what your goals are for that day. Is your goals to just go out and catch fish? Because that's one thing, but if your goals are to go out and maybe just learn something, you don't always have to catch a lot of fish in order to learn something. For instance, maybe you wanna learn how to fish a new lure. And you could go out and throw a shaky head and catch 20 fish throwing a shaky head, but you wanna learn how to throw a spinner bait. And you may only catch one or two fish on that spinner bait, but it really helps you to learn. So understanding your goals when you go out there on the water is extremely important. Is it to go out there and just wreck the fish? or is it to learn something? There's been days on the water where I don't even pick up a fishing rod. I will literally just go out, I'll sit behind my electronics over here, and I'll just study the bottom. I'll look at things on the bottom, I'll try to get in tune with my electronics, and I consider that to be a very successful day, although I didn't even catch a fish, but, I learned a lot about my electronics. Now the best days are when you can go out and you catch a lot of fish and you learn a lot. So it's really important, again, understand your goals before you even hit the water. Now I know I said five tips, but I'm gonna leave you real quick with one really important thing that I think every fisherman should do before they hit the water, and that is simply, tell somebody you're out there fishing, whether it's your friend, your wife, your spouse, whoever it may be, just let somebody know that you're out there fishing because fishing can be dangerous, whether you're in a boat or on the bank. So letting someone know, hey, I'm gonna be out for three or four hours and then I'm gonna come back, that's really important to know. And of course, I want you guys to be safe. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Don't forget to check out the fin fishing gear right here. And if you wanna watch a video that I did that talks about 90% of bass fishing in 15 minutes, you can click this video right here. Guys, thanks for watching. Subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you guys in the next video.